We're deep into another drought in Oklahoma. High temperatures in about 41 days of uh, time period with very little to no rain throughout much of the state. Many people have been diligently caring for their warm season grass lawns for a number of weeks and they may be either tiring or your community may be telling you you've got to cut back on water. Well, if you've used Bermuda grass or buffalo grass, we want to tell you you're in one of the best situations to cooperate with that reduced watering regime. Some people may even choose to completely quit watering those two turf grasses. And we want to bring some comfort to the situation because if you've picked Bermuda grass or buffalo grass, you've picked the two warm season perennial grass species that have some of the best heat tolerance and drought tolerance in existence. There is something called summer drought dormancy where water availability in the, in the soil becomes so limiting that the turf grasses such as Bermuda, buffalo, and others actually fire their leaves. Leaf firing is when the leaves uh, turn bluish gray first, they wilt, and then in the presence of strong sunlight, the UV wavelengths actually break down the pigments in the leaves. And then you see the tan color of the cellulose, hemicellulose, and the lignin that's in the leaves. Actually, I think it's quite attractive straw brown color. Well, in this segment, we talk about the ability of buffalo grass and Bermuda grass if they haven't been too negatively affected by diseases, insects, or actually over fertilization with nitrogen, uh, they should be able to handle this summer drought dormancy and come back when uh, rains return either in summer or in the fall. Now I'm standing at the interface of a common Bermuda grass area and a prestige buffalo grass. You can see a few uh, green shoots still uh, in the Bermuda grass and in the buffalo grass, but they're largely firing off. And this is uh, a concern if we had over fertilized them or if we'd had a lot of insect or disease damage that would have compromised their ability uh, to conduct water in their tissues and go into dormancy. But in this particular area, we didn't have grub issues, we didn't have fall armyworm or hunting billbug injury. So we're very confident about the performance that we're gonna get out of this particular area. So you always need to scout for uh, insect injury. A little injury is okay, but excess, of course, can be a problem. And uh, we wanna keep a cutting height somewhere in the range of an inch and a half to three inches for these two species uh, in lawns. Uh, we wanna make sure we don't over fertilize buffalo grass. So that's gonna be a one pound to a maximum of three pounds uh, active ingredient nitrogen per thousand square foot for Bermuda grass, similar range, but don't exceed four pounds of nitrogen per thousand. When this drought is over with, we're gonna pull some cores. We're gonna show you where uh, the new green shoots came from, and that'll teach us about the value of underground stems called rhizomes in the case of Bermuda grasses, and just sheer drought tolerance in the case of buffalo grasses. So don't fret, your Bermuda grass and your buffalo grass can stand a certain amount of summer drought dormancy and then come back once the rains resume. When thinking about turf type cover for shady areas, many people think about tall fescues, Kentucky bluegrasses, and perennial ryegrasses. But I'd like to also mention the ability to use Carex sedges. Carex is a genus, remember as we scientifically classify plants, we talk about the genus and species name. Well, Carex is a genus, a very large genus of sedges. And when we talk about sedges, people oftentimes think of them as being weeds, but there's many valuable plants within the Carex genus. We can use Carex species members such as Leavenworth sedge, Amphibola sedge, Texas sedge, and even Pennsylvania sedge as a turf type ground cover in Oklahoma. Now, three of those species, all but Pennsylvania sedge, are naturally found in Oklahoma. And even the Pennsylvania sedge, which is found in the eastern U.S., is commercialized and you can buy plug flat trays of it and plant it as plugs. Here at the Botanic Garden at OSU, for many years, we've had wonderful members of the Carrick species in our shaded areas here on the grounds. In fact, other turf professors and myself over the years have actually killed some of these sedges out and we've tried to install tall fescue. Well, the fescue died either during uh, disease-prone periods of heavy rainfall or drought 
type conditions like we're seeing now in Oklahoma, and the sedges came back from seed that was already present in the soil. So it's hard to beat something that wants to live and come back and form a, a nice dense turf cover. The OSU team is actually working to develop improved turf type carrick sedges, both available from plugs and seed in the future. But in the meantime, commercial industry already has a plug flat trays of these species available to you. In fact, if you've ever visited the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, you've seen an area of Texas sedge that's been talked about uh, in a dry shade there. Well, we have a mix of the Carrick sedge species here, and I'd like to point them out to you at this time. So actually we have uh, cart traffic for horticulturalists serving the various parts of the botanic garden. And so in the, the fore area here, we actually have cart traffic on these Carrick sedges that are here. Uh, to my left is a non-trafficked area. And this area is mowed anywhere uh, from once a week to once every two weeks, depending on how tall the sedges get, but also it's kept in about a one and a half to three inch cutting height range. Now sedges, the Carrick sedges have short rhizomes, so they're not going to produce a really long rhizome like Bermuda grass, and they don't form an above ground stem called a stolon, they form the below ground stem call, called a rhizome. They spread horizontally through a little bit of throwing of seed, but also largely through the rhizomes turning up and they'll form a clump that you see here. And these clumps are not unlike the clumps that you see uh, with tall fescues. Now, the sedges are slow growing, but they are heat tolerant, drought tolerant, and very cold tolerant. And they're found throughout the US. They do need watering and fertilization during establishment, but you can withdraw those resources as you get them to maturity. So don't just think of tall fescues, bluegrasses, and ryegrasses for set, uh, shade. Think about a carrick sedge and its ability to tolerate incredible heat and drought at maturity. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.